solving the equations where we have variables on both sides is kind of like one of the last types of equations that we learned to solve. And it's pretty straightforward. It looks weird because we're so used to variables on one side, but let me show you how we go about solving these. Generally, what you wanna do is take a look at one side of the equation um, that you notice maybe there's something that we can simplify. And when I mean simplify, I mean uh, any like terms, any parentheses that we could actually use the distributive property on, something like that. And then you wanna simplify that out. So completely simplify that so that there's nothing else that we can do um, to that particular side and then make sure the other side doesn't have anything that we could simplify. So first step is just simplify. Make sure there's no like terms that we can combine. There's no parentheses that we have to work with. Everything is um, as simple as possible. And then what we do after that is then we wanna bring all the variables that we care about to one side and we wanna bring everything else, the constants to the other side of the equation. So let me show you what that looks like. With number one, let me move some of this out of the way. With number one, the left problem, when I see this, I look at the left side of the equation and I see a 10 minus five, we could actually simplify that. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this as two X and that'd be plus five equals three X. And it looks very similar to the other problems that we've done. Again, it just kind of, we have variables on both sides of the equation. And, and what I see a lot of students do is when I ask them, okay, well, how can we get the variables on both sides? It's very tempting to say, you know, minus two and minus two and the twos cancel out and there's an X and we don't do any of that. Remember the two X is just a number. We can treat it just like we would treat a five. If I asked you to get rid of the five, you would subtract. We do the opposite operation, just like normal. Same thing with that two X. That's just a plus two X. We're gonna bring that to the right side. That's a two, by the way. And uh, once we do that, it cancels out over here. Two X minus two X is just zero. And we get a one X over here, X equals five. That's it. That's pretty much it for that one. <laughs> so now I brought the two X um, from the left to the right. What I could have done is brought the three X to the left side, but I don't wanna bring the variable on the same side as my constant. Remember the, the main purpose is to get all of your variables on one side, what we call isolating the variable and everything else on the other side. And that's exactly what we did. We've got the variable on one side, we've got the constant on the other. And if you've seen the other videos, you know what we wanna do next is just double check our answer. If I go back up and try x equals five, two times five is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 minus five is 15. Over on the right side, three times five is definitely 15. So we definitely got the right answer for that one. So this particular one, I just threw the 10 minus five in there. You will see ones like that where you do have to simplify and bring like terms together, um, a lot of times being constants. But the main idea as well is, what do we do when the variables are on both sides? And just remember the variables themselves are just regular numbers. We just don't know what they are, but we can still treat them the same. We can add, subtract them, uh, multiply or divide them if we need to, and, and all that good stuff. So. Let's try another one that's a little more realistic in terms of something that you would see in class um, after you learn how to do these. But again, what you wanna look at is see, all right, one of the sides, is there anything that I can simplify? Now that you look at the right side, it's very tempting when you're first doing these, like, oh, this would be like 23X, but remember, that's a variable, that's a constant. Those are not like terms, we can't combine those together. But on the left side, I see a set of parentheses that we can use the distributive property on. So take a look at the left side and try and simplify that one. And if you look, it looks like this would just give us 5X minus 10 equals 3X plus 20. Now again, there's not just one way with this one. If you look, we've got a variable and a constant, a variable and a constant. All we're doing here is we wanna get all the variables on one side, all the constants on the other. So there's not just one way to do this. What I will do is I'm gonna actually bring the, and I actually, before I say anything, I would encourage you just to pause the video and try just like the last problem uh, and solve this and see what you get. So hopefully you tried this one out and just got some practice seeing what's going on with these. I'm gonna bring the three X to the left side. And remember, that's just a positive three X. We're not dividing by three. We don't wanna do that. We wanna bring the entire term over. So we're gonna subtract three X from both sides. This will become two X. This just cancels out to zero. And then if we rewrite our equation, we get this. Now, 
uh, what a lot of my students do after this, they'll say, okay, well, let's bring the 20 over to the left side. But remember, the main purpose with these problems, when you've got variables on both sides, is to get variables on one side. You're going to hear me say this a lot. <laughs> variables on one side, constants on the other. That's the main idea. So if you notice, look what happened here. We've only got a variable on one side of the equation. That's step one. That's mission one accomplished, whatever you want to call it. We've got that. We've done that. Let's get everything else on the other side of the equation. And when I say everything else, I see this minus 10 that's on the same side. I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And let's see what we get. Looks like we still have that 2x. We didn't do anything to that. On the right side, and these cancel out to 0. On the right side, we now have 30. And if you look, this looks exactly, actually, this problem up here looked like problems that we had done in the past. But this problem definitely looks like when you first started the one-step equations. We have a 2x equals 30. All that we have to do to get x by itself is divide by 2. We get a nice whole number. You won't always get a whole number. I just picked these ones to be like that. But let's go back and double check. x equals 15. Let's see what we get when we plug it in. I'm going to go back to the original. x equals 15. So I'm going to plug it in right here. And it looks like 15 minus 2, that's 13. 13 times 5. That gives us 65. So we have 65 on the left side. And again, if I plug in 15 over here, I get 15 times 3. That's 45 plus 20 is 65. And that's it. That's a true statement. Obviously, 65 equals 65. And we know this is our correct answer. So just to recap what we did for this one, um, we looked, I saw a distributive property that we can simplify there. No, I saw a parentheses that we can simplify with the distributive property. Um, and then we go from there. Once you've simplified both sides as far as they can go, so there's no like terms we can combine, anything like that, then we want to go about um, the process of getting the variables on one side, getting all the constants on the other side. That's what we want to do. And that's how we can solve these types of problems where variables are on both sides. Now, last one, this is very, very uh, common where you've got, literally, if you look, you've got the distributive property on both sides. So take your pick. It's up to you. Go ahead and work through this one um, and see what you get. And then we'll work through this one together. Now, I'm going to pick the left side just because there's no one that you have to start with. You don't have to start with the left side. Um, it just looks nicer. <laughs> so we do that 4x minus 12. And actually, I can do this right here. Um, as well, just in one fell swoop, we can do these together and just get rid of the distributive property right there. And this looks exactly like the problem we had in the last one, um, where we've got our variables, we've got constants on both sides. So take your pick from here and um, see if you can get the variables on one side and the constants on the other. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 4x to the right side, because then we'll have 6x minus 4x, we'll have a positive x term. Whereas if I had done this, if I brought the 6x, whoops, if I brought the 6x to the uh, left side, 4 minus 6, we would get a negative x term, which is nothing wrong with that. It just makes more work for us. We want, if we can, <laughs> we would like positive variables. Okay, so what I do here, I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. This cancels out here. And our new expression, sorry, our new equation looks like this, 2x minus 24. And then from here, this looks exactly like those two-step problems we were doing uh, a couple videos ago. Um, from here, what I'm going to do is still just going to leave this variable. Notice we only have one variable term now. We don't have variables on both sides, so that's exactly what we want. And I'm going to add 24 just to get rid of that so we can get all the constants on the other side away from the variable. So this will give us positive 12 equals 2x. And then from here, it's pretty pretty straightforward compared to like when you look at the other videos that we did, it looks exactly like those videos. So if you're not comfortable with, you know, doing this or doing this, definitely go back um, a video or two to one step problems, two step problems, um, equations, um, and be comfortable solving those because that's all these really are. We just want to break them down into those types of equations. Now I got x equals six. Let's go back and double check. Obviously, it's not as fun plugging into uh, problems where we have two distributive properties, but let's check. So x equals six. This gives us 6 minus 3, that's 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Um, again, we had x equals 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. 6 times 2 is definitely 12. And if you look, that's a true statement. That's how we know x equals 6. So again, just to recap, when we have variables on both sides of the equation, what we want to do is 
double check and see, is there anything that we can combine? Anything that we can simplify? That's what I meant to say. Anything that we can simplify. And what that means is, are there any like terms? Are there any parentheses that we can use the distributive property on? Um, and then focus on one equation, one, one side of the equation, excuse me. And then once that's all simplified, And what that means is, are there any like terms that we can combine together? Are there any parentheses that we can maybe use the distributive property on? And we're doing this to one side of the equation. Once you've completely simplified that side, just make sure the other side is simplified as well. And then we go about getting our variables together on one side and getting our variables, no, our constants <laughs> together on the other side. That's the main point of having variables on both sides. We want to get all the variables together. Um, so that we can solve it just like we were doing in the last problems well, if variables on one side of the equation Then we can definitely solve it. Okay, so that's all these problems are just being comfortable um, Knowing wait, I can just subtract 3x. So I don't have to divide by 3 You know things like that and just be very very careful I will say because I see a lot of students where they'll see this again 3x I think I showed you this you have like a 3x and students want to kind of maybe subtract 3 off and do it like that, you know, algebraically, it doesn't work like that. If you wanna bring the whole three X over, you bring the entire thing over. So that three X is just a number, we can subtract three X. Um, or if I wanna bring the two X over like we did in the problem, that's just a number, we can subtract two X. If it was a minus two X here, I could add two X to both sides. Okay, so getting comfortable treating these variable terms just like normal constants and knowing we can do that is probably the hardest part of this whole, um, this whole section, this whole, topic of variables on both sides. So hopefully this video helped a bit. I'll put a link in the description that has some extra practice problems for you to work on and just to make sure you feel comfortable with these. It'll have the solutions as well, but make sure that you work through the problem and get an answer before you look at the solution. Okay, it kind of defeats the purpose if you're looking before you get an answer. Okay, um, again, hopefully this video helped. Uh, again, we're kind of rounding out our uh, study of solving equations, which is one of the biggest things that you learn in algebra. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.